there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're coming from TikTok or Instagram, feel free to throw down a like below. Or, in case you've randomly stumbled upon this video, here's what's up. A few months ago, I was in college and needed a side project. I was rewatching Miraculous Ladybug again, and I knew that the order was messed up on Netflix. I decided to devote some time looking up the order and made a TikTok account about how the order was messed up and present the order I thought was best. Now, I know some people don't want to scroll through all my TikTok videos, so I made this YouTube channel! Hey, that will be covering my thoughts about the Miraculous Ladybug order. We're gonna start with season one since I already made videos for all those episodes. Before we go on, here's the list of the order I made for season one. Now, I didn't just make this list out of the blue. I did a lot of research and got a lot of people's opinions on it, and that's why I made this video to explain the reasons behind the order. The rest of this video is a compilation of all the videos I made on TikTok about the episodes in season one. Because of TikTok's upload rules, each episode is covered in about a minute or less, uh, except for Origins at the end. I'll have a link in the description below where you can go look at the order, the reasons for both season one and season two. I'm working on season three, it's almost done. My format of these videos was calling out Netflix for a certain amount of days, and I'm starting this on day three, since day one was about all the seasons, and day two was just about a petition that I made. Meh. So, I hope you enjoy the video where you can fast forward and rewind and pause and all that other fun jazz you can't do on TikTok or Instagram. Without further ado, here are my reasons for the order of Miraculous Ladybug Season 1. Day 3 of calling out Netflix to fix the order of Miraculous Ladybug. Season 1 is a mess everywhere. We've talked about why the production order of Season 1 is screwed up, but let's talk about what's wrong with Netflix. Thankfully, it's not that bad. So, only Netflix, the US DVD releases, Canada, and apparently Wales use Bubbler as the first episode. Everywhere else uses Stormy Weather. Fun fact, Pakistan has Pharaoh as the first episode for some reason. We'll be talking more about episode 1 tomorrow. Origins is episode 15-16. It's just a weird place to put it in the middle of the season, similar to what production order does. Again, we're not putting Origins as the first episode. It's written as a flashback, it does not work for new viewers. Animan is in a weird spot for me. Dark Cupid and Horrificator should be switched around. And I'll say it till the day I die, Simon Says should be the second to last episode. Click on this link in my bio for all my reasons for the season one order. Till next time, bug out. Day four of calling out Netflix about the miraculous ladybug order. Bubbler versus Stormy Weather. Netflix has Bubbler as their first episode to introduce the series. But almost across the board, everyone else agrees that it should be Stormy Weather. Let me give you a few pointers. It's the first episode produced, and it's a wonderful introduction to Marinette and Alia, and is a simple intro to the world. Now, Bubbler is a good episode, but it's very Adrian, and of course Nino, centered, and adds more characters than our main protagonists. While Adrian and Nino are important, I'm sorry Cat Noir, but this show's main character is Marinette slash Ladybug. She narrates the intro! Stormy Weather has the best introduction to characters, world, and is the simplest. Bubbler is a good expansion, adding more characters, exposition, and works best as an extension of the first episode. Netflix, replace Bubbler with Stormy Weather. I'll go into more specifics with Stormy Weather tomorrow. Till then, bug out. Day 5 of calling out Netflix about Miraculous. It is criminal that Netflix doesn't have Stormy Weather as the first episode, and I'll explain why it works. We only have these characters in the episode. Marinette slash Ladybug, Adrian slash Cat Noir, Alia, Manon, Stormy Weather, and Hawk Moth. Very simple, it doesn't overwhelm the new viewers with too many faces. The conflict and Akumas are set up very organically. We know who the villain is and how he seeks negative emotions. A simple introduction to the Lucky Charm and Cataclysm. Doesn't make the rules too difficult, with the timer of the Miraculous or the info on Kwamis as in Bubbler. A lot of the writing feels like first episode exposition. And it's centered on Marinette, the main character of the show. These are the reasons why this works best as a first episode. Tomorrow we'll look at Bubbler and how it works best as a second episode. Till then, bug out. Day 6 of calling out Netflix about Miraculous. Bubbler is the first episode, and it's a crime! Let's talk about why it works best as a second episode. Our main man, Adrian slash Cat Noir. He does deserve his own episode, and it's his birthday. Since he's the second half of the duo, he should be more in the second episode. 
since we know our main characters, we can expand to get to know their parents. This is Chloe's first episode, but she isn't necessarily a villain yet. She doesn't have conflict with anyone, it just shows that 1. She really likes Adrian, and 2. She's a queen bee. We'll get her being more of an antagonist later in the series. The Lucky Charm is used for Marinette's own gain. Good for a second episode, but wouldn't be good for a first introduction of it. The Timer of the Miraculous is introduced. Overall, a very good episode, but it expands upon the characters and world we already know instead of introducing them. That's why it belongs as a second episode. We'll go into Mr. Pigeon tomorrow. Till then, bug out. Day 7 of calling out Netflix about Miraculous. Ah, uh, Mr. Pigeon. He's classic. Hmm. Most places have this episode pretty high, with Netflix having it second. We're just shifting it to third. We want to introduce Marinette and Adrian, and then the early experiences of Ladybug and Cat Noir. This episode does spend more time introducing Ladybug and Cat Noir, since they are still early in the show. It's a good follow-up to Bubbler with Gabriel since we were just introduced to him and we know his character. Chloe is more set up as an antagonist. Last episode she was just a mean girl, but here we get more of a hint of her versus Marinette. Hawkmoth as a villain is also better developed. That's why we want this episode here. Tomorrow we'll be going into Timebreaker. Till then, bug out. Day 8 of calling out Netflix about the Miraculous Order. Hey Netflix, we're on the same page, with Timebreaker being the fourth episode. This is the introduction of a character of the class being akumatized, besides Nino, which is how we will get to better know these kids throughout the first season. This episode needs to be early because later we're gonna meet Alex's brother in Pharaoh. So this has to at least be before that because in that episode she's called out by name. We get more Chloe development here. We're really learning about this mean girl. This episode has two ladybugs, which will go well with the next episode with two cat noirs. That's about it for this episode. We'll be keeping an eye out for Alex in the future. Till next time, bug out. Day 9 of Calling Out Netflix About Miraculous The theme of two ladybugs and then two cat noirs is what keeps Timebreaker and Copycat back to back. This episode also does a good job at introducing Adrian's hobbies and adding more to his character, along with making it clear about Cat Noir being in love with Ladybug. He's been around before, but we have more focus on Roger as the cop, and him kinda being a jerk. Some other fun facts. It's explicitly stated that Marinette doesn't have Adrian's phone number, and he doesn't recognize hers either. They should be talking by at least Gamer though. I'm pretty sure this is the first mention of the Lady Blog. Next time we will deviate from Netflix's order again. Till then, bug out. Day 10 of Calling Out Netflix about the Miraculous Ladybug Order Netflix skips to the Pharaoh, but let me tell you why we should introduce Roger Cop. First of all, Roger is fresh in our minds from the last episode. It's also good to know who Roger is as a character early on. Second, we have some Nino business that we need to take care of before we can get too deep into the series. Roger Cop and Annie Man are linked because it sorta of introduces the Nino Marinette love story coming in the next episode with Nino recording Marinette and winking at her. We want to get this plot point over with ASAP. Marinette's dad makes reference to an Eiffel Tower cake, which was made in Timebreaker, so there's a small reason this could be after that episode and why we want to make her closer. We're also introduced to Nathaniel's drawings. Tomorrow we're shipping Nino and Alia. Till then, bug out. Day 11 of calling out Netflix about Miraculous. Netflix, and other places, have Animan much later. Let me talk you through why this is such a big mistake. Nino having a crush on Marinette is a weird plot device, and we gotta get rid of it ASAP. He's much more suited with Alia, who he does hang around with a lot more in later episodes, so it would make sense if they were a couple. It just doesn't work with the rest of the series to have Nino develop this random crush. We have some time to let me say, Alia and Nino are my favorite ship. I adore them. And other episodes like Lady Wi-Fi and Horrificator not only make sense with them together, but adds a lot of depth to their relationship. I love them and they need to be together as early as possible. One other thing, Cat Noir sniffs Ladybug and then makes a comment in the next episode, Pharaoh, about how girls smell. It's a small detail, but I like it. Speaking of Alia, tomorrow we start her character development episodes. Till then, bug out. Day 12 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. We're going over Pharaoh! Yes! We are starting the two Alia episodes. A little later than Netflix's order, but we already discussed the whole Nino situation. 
This episode is best early on, so we do get some episodes about the history of the Miraculous without developing too much lore or including Master Fu. This has to come after Timebreaker because of Alex's dad and brother. These two episodes also shouldn't be too far apart so that we remember who they are. I'm sorry. Hey, you're in the same grade as Alex, right? I'm her older brother, Jaleel Kubdal. So, you're into Tootin' Common too? Ha, and the sniff comment by Adrian DePlag. I've seen this episode later in the series slash after Lady Wi-Fi, and I don't think that's right. They are companion pieces. So, we will talk about Lady Wi-Fi, my favorite villain, tomorrow. Till then, bug out. Day 13 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Lady Wi-Fi. Good job keeping these two together, Netflix. I may be gay, but Lady Wi-Fi can get it. First of all, I like it best if Nino and Alia are a couple in this episode. They're basically holding hands at one point, Nino knows about her being suspended, and they get together three times. It just seems cuter if they're a couple, which is why Annie Man has to be earlier. This is a good conclusion to Pharaoh because of Alia's arc about trying to learn more about Ladybug. Cat Noir still wants to know Ladybug's identity, so it's a good continuation of what he was thinking about in Pharaoh. It makes sense after Roger Cop because of Chloe's love for Ladybug, and the principal doesn't want to get into it with the mayor, who he had drama with in that episode. Kim is still loyal to Chloe, so before Dark Cupid. Hope that makes sense. Evil Illustrator is next. Till then, bug out. Day 14 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Time to mention it again, Evil Illustrator. Netflix put this after Lady Wi-Fi, and I agree, that's where it works best. It's obviously after Stormy Weather and Lady Wi-Fi. We've talked about this. Kat seems to flirt with Marinette, who was his friend's crush, but now Nino's with Alia, which is why I think it works best after Annie Man. Wouldn't that be kind of scummy if not? Also, we ship Marichat. We see a few other relationships deepening. Chloe and Sabrina is explained more, plus Chloe and Ladybug. Ah, Ladybug, text me! Hawkmoth says he wants to rule the world, and that feels like early writing. Once I have them all in my grasp, I shall rule the world! Maybe he does, but his motivations seem to change by season two. Anyway, great episode, Nathaniel is the best. Next classmate, Milen in Horrificator. Till then, bug out. Day 15 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. We're talking about Horrificator. Now, Netflix has the episode following Evil Illustrator as Roger Cop, but we already explained why that has to be earlier. Then they have Dark Cupid before Horrificator. I think this is switched and here's my reason. Kim. Kim doesn't seem too hot and bothered about Chloe, which she'll get in Dark Cupid, so I believe this should be earlier. Obviously Nino and Ollie are together. That look? So it 100% has to be after Annie Man, which is another reason Annie Man is so high on my list. Milan and Ivan seem to become a couple here, which is seen in later episodes such as Dark Blade. We also meet Milan's dad soon, so we should know her first. My main issue is Marinette kissing Adrian. It just doesn't seem possible that she'd be comfortable doing that at this point in the series, and he doesn't seem to know her too well either. I'll allow the show to have this plot point early, but I'm not happy about it. Romance is in the air, Dark Cupid is next. Till then, bug out. Day 16 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Dark Cupid, here we come. Fun fact, this is the first episode of Miraculous I've ever seen. Netflix put this before Horrificator, but like I said yesterday, that doesn't make sense because in this episode we get Kim turning bitter towards Chloe, and he doesn't seem against her in Horrificator, so I'm switching them. Since in this episode Kim gets over his crush with Chloe, other episodes where he is nice to her slash hugging her need to be before this. Here's this moment for y'all to enjoy. Your little secret will be out of the bag! What am I doing here? This episode continues the theme of love from the last one, and follows nicely with another dark episode. Yep, we're watching Dark Blade next. Till then, bug out. Day 17 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Another dark episode, Dark Blade. When I was going through the order, I had difficulty placing this episode, and let me tell you why. Jagged Stone! Jagged sadly has two introductions this season, this episode and in Pixelator. You can't help it. No matter what, Jagged messes up something, somewhere. He seems to be more of a throwaway character in this episode. Plus, this episode wouldn't make a ton of sense later, so we'll keep it here and be angry at the writers. Milan and Ivan are shown as a couple here, so after Horrificator. Kim and Chloe aren't on good terms. 
she totally scowls at him, and he is scared of her. Marinette's diary box is introduced here, and seen later in Gamer, so it has to be before that episode. Look at my reasons order in my bio for more details. Next time, the mime. Till then, bug out. Day 19 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. The first appearance of the Puppeteer. Obviously, it has to be after Roger Cop, Evil Illustrator, and Lady Wi-Fi. We've seen both Nadia and Manon before, but this is the first time it's established their mother-daughter. I love how Ladybug whistles her own theme in this episode. Really, there isn't a lot keeping this episode here, since it's not connected to a lot of other storylines, but it needed to go somewhere, and the other episodes do have a certain place they fit best. Plus, it's kind of nice to have mimes and puppets close together, don't you think? Tomorrow, we're talking about Rose and Princess Fragrance. Till then, bug out. Day 20 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Yes, the episode featuring Rose! Since Rose likes Prince Ali, we need to have him mentioned closer to the end of the season because Lila mentions him as one of her friends. Master Fu is in this episode. This works great in the second half of the season because it's close enough to the end that we'll remember him for the end of Volpina, but not so close that it happens within the next episode or two. A few people use these two reasons to put it super close to the end, but I think we need to let these storylines breathe for a second. The end is only eight episodes away. If we can remember who Lila is without seeing her for 23 episodes, we can remember who Master Fu is for 8. Side note, Cat Noir has been controlled a lot in these past few episodes, lol. Tomorrow we're looking at Gamer. Till then, bug out. Day 21 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. We're looking at Gamer. The number one reason this episode is here is because of that dang diary. If it wasn't for that, I would have placed it earlier, but we gotta be conscious of the series' continuity. I think this should be the first time Adrian comes to Marinette's house, therefore it should be before Kung Fu. It also should be closer to season 2 because of the charm Marinette is going to give to Adrian. We'll see it twice in that season. We're almost done getting to know all of the classmates. This scene at the beginning of the episode is enhanced if we know most of the characters. The next episode is Reflecta, which is the final episode of a character of the class being akumatized, besides Chloe and Sabrina. Till then, bug out. Day 22 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. It's time for Reflecta. Because of the class photo of the characters, we should be familiar with them all by now, in my opinion. I say this is the final episode where all the class members have been introduced. Besides Chloe, Sabrina, and Ivan, everyone else has been akumatized by this episode. The rest of the episodes, besides Antibug, feature other side characters being akumatized, so I don't think we should have any class members after Reflecta. Also, is it just me, or is Reflecta not listening to Hawkmoth at all? Next time, we're introduced to a fan of Jagged Stone. Till then, bug out. Day 23 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. The episode Pixelator is our focus for today. Bleh. The second introduction of Jagged Stone. I hate it. An interesting note compared to Darkblade, but Marinette doesn't seem starstruck by Jagged. She's more interested in Adrian in this episode. Apparently, this is the first time ridiculous, utterly ridiculous, is said. Obviously, it has to be before Guitar Villain because of those glasses. Speaking of Guitar Villain, that's what we're looking at tomorrow. Till then, bug out. Day 24 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Looking at Jagged Stone's villain episode. It's obviously after Pixelator because of the glasses, and I think it works best immediately after. I love how later Bob is introduced as XY's dad, but in this episode, Jagged Stone keeps on criticizing him, lol. Note, I've seen some people put Darkblade between these two episodes, and at first I got behind it. But sadly, Jagged is a mess no matter where you put him. He would totally recognize Marinette at the autograph spot. 
and he obviously likes her, so she could easily get an autograph from him. I think it's good after Puppeteer, because it seems that Ladybug has a connection with Nadia here, but that's a minor detail. Also, when I was watching, I thought that XY and Chloe would be perfect for each other, but I doubt anyone else is shipping that, huh? Next episode is Kung Food. Till then, bug out. Day 25 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Yum yum, it's Kung Food. Adrian comes to Marinette's house. I think this certainly needs to be after Gamer because 1. He seems to know where she lives. 2. Marinette wouldn't be so freaked out in Gamer if this occurred before. Because of Jagged Stone, it has to come after Pixelator slash Guitar Villain. This works closer to the end because, again, instead of introducing school kids, we are branching out. Many people have it earlier, but that just doesn't make any sense to me with Adrian and Marinette's relationship at this point, along with the previous reasons. How many times does Chloe have to almost die before she realizes she needs to change her attitude? Many people have this episode after Annie Bug, and I thought that once too, but changed my mind on it, and we'll see that in the next episode. Till then, bug out. Day 26 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Chloe's anti-bug episode. I've moved this after Kung Food for these reasons. I think it just ends the season on a good note on Chloe, rather than have an episode about her, and then we turn around and have another episode with her, and she's acting awful immediately again. If it's placed before Kung Food, I think we get kind of whiplash because we swiftly go back to hating her, lol. It gives Marinette, Ladybug, a better reason to keep disliking Chloe at the start of Antibug. If Kung Fu was after Antibug, she would possibly have a soft spot for Chloe, at least for a moment. Yet Marinette can be annoyed at her at the start of Antibug because of Kung Fu, and everything else of course. It makes sense for Chloe to want more TV attention in Antibug if it's after Kung Fu, since she basically was kicked off the cooking show. And in the end, it's just a cool episode to have later on. Simon Says is next. Till then, bug out. Day 27 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Simon Says it needs to be second to last. Spoiler warning! Gabriel's Hakma. I cannot say this enough. This episode needs to be the penultimate episode and should not be near the beginning or middle. It is a travesty to be put anywhere else. All the hints at Gabriel's Hakma, it's tense. It so belongs at the end of the season. Why do we see this and then just let Gabriel do whatever he wants during the rest of the season? This is the first episode to really mention Emily so far, so it should occur near the end, in my opinion, especially with what we learn in Volpina slash Collector. Emily is important, and I don't like mentioning her in the middle of the series and then not mentioning her again for forever. There's just way too much background with the aggress to put it anywhere but the end. Season finale, Volpina is next. Till then, bug out. Day 28 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Volpina! This is the final episode, there is no debate. But we will point out important things. Look, it's the Peacock Miraculous. There is a running theme in this show about Ladybug slash Marinette not liking liars, so to me, this actually isn't too out of character to call out Lila. This book is very important, setting up both Origins and Season 2. We'll talk about Origins next. Oh, hold on. Till then, bug out. Day 29 of calling out the Netflix order of Miraculous. Why Origins shouldn't be first. Yes, it's the episode you've all been waiting for. And it's been a month since I started posting daily. Woohoo! I swear, I've seen so many comments talking about why Origins should be at the beginning. But don't you worry folks, I'll be giving you so many reasons why it should be at the end. First of all, I think it works best after Volpina because of these reasons. The book scene in Volpina is seen at the start of Origins, a very good transition. The ultimate power set in the opening is expounded more in Season 2, rather than Season 1. Emily Agress isn't seen in Season 1 at all, but featured in Season 2. Another clue is the description of the episode. Wait, let's look at that one more time. But maybe you don't trust the description. It is Netflix after all. Don't you worry, I'll be thorough with other reasons. As I said before, not only does it have poor character introduction, it has way too many characters. Doesn't explain the rules of the world well. It makes references to previous episodes and has more emotional impact if you're familiar with the show and characters. A few other points. Plenty of other shows have their origins later, so this isn't unique. This episode is meant to shift the expectations viewers are used to, such as Marinette not liking Adrian at first. 
Along those lines, not only are there too many references to what a regular viewer should be familiar with, but it introduces a few new ideas as well, such as what happens when you don't capture an Akuma. I'll give you some specific examples next. So, I've said that this has poor character introduction, but what does that mean? Well, for starters, here are all the characters who are seen in these episodes. In contrast, here's a list of all those involved in these two episodes, Stormy Weather and Bubbler. How is Ivan and Milen's story and origin supposed to warm your heart when you have so many characters thrown at you at once? You don't know who is important because there are so many characters included. It's also a poor introduction to Adrian and Marinette. We see Marinette as a shy, clumsy girl, and Adrian as a rich kid who just doesn't want to be kept at home. In reality, their portrayals are much stronger if we know who they are beforehand. It makes their appearance in these episodes much more diverse. Some may ask, well, how else are we supposed to get to know these characters? By watching the first season? There's a reason all the classmates are akumatized in season 1. Let's move on to how it doesn't handle introducing the world right. This episode introduces the mechanics of the world very poorly. We are throwing all this in a few seconds. Okay, so all I have to do is brick the object where the whatchamacallit is hiding? It's called an akuma, which you must then capture. Got it. Capture it. And what's that charm thing again? The lucky charm. It's your secret superpower. Those words only make sense to those who understand them. Do we know what an akuma is yet? We'll see the lucky charm in five minutes down the road, but it really doesn't explain what it does. How does this introduce it to the new viewers? Marinette said, oh, This is all going too fast, Tiki. It is for her, and it would be for a new viewer as well. We also get this bit of exposition. Then you only have five minutes before you transform back. Didn't your Kwame explain anything to you? Lord, how much do you want new viewers to retain? You can't throw all the rules at them in a span of 15 minutes. We don't even see her capture an Akuma until she's attacking the face. The viewer doesn't know about her magic yo-yo, she could be murdering all those butterflies for all they know. We'll talk about references next. There are multiple references to other episodes, the most obvious being this. Not really following you, but guess I better trust you. Something tells me that this is how it's gonna be from here on out. This is a wink to the audience about the formula in season 1. It wouldn't make sense to new viewers because it hasn't happened. It's a hint of a trope of the show. Oh wait, even better! Finding out who's really under that mask. Uh-huh. Obviously references to all his actions in the series. <laughs> Whoa, why am I stammering? This is a joke about how in other episodes she can't form a sentence around Adrian. It's a reference a new viewer wouldn't know about yet. And we have other small references, such as Marinette as a designer, some things with Chloe, and other character backgrounds. In the end, there are too many nods to the rest of the season for it to work as a first episode. Final thoughts are next. I know in the end some people will say, well... This happens chronologically first. Yes, but that's literally the only reason why it would be first. There's no other good one. If you want to watch it in chronological order, go for it, I guess? I honestly don't understand why you would, even on a rewatch. It doesn't add anything to the show. But don't let me rain on your parade. But don't you dare suggest it to a new viewer as the first episode. As I said, it works best after Volpina, with that book being a bridge. It was written to be at the end of the season, and it works. It looks back on Season 1 and prepares us for Season 2. Again, why move it in chronological order? I could talk another 6 parts about this, but I'll leave this here. Someone suggested I make a YouTube video about this. I actually think I will. Please share these videos with a friend who thinks Origins should be the first episode. Finally, bug out. Wow, I can't believe you're still here! That was like a whole 30 minutes! Anyway, I hope it made sense, in the very least. As a reminder, you can read about why I have this in this order in the description below and the look at the Season 1 order that I have. I'll be talking about Season 2 all through April, but you can get ahead of me and look at the order and read the reasons why I have it in my bio, still. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, you can like it down below. And subscribe, because I am going to upload a few more videos on this YouTube. Also, comment down below if you liked this video and what you thought that the order was good. Or if you thought that I messed up the order and let me know. I'm open to criticism. Also, uh, that's it. <laughs> See you later. Bug out.